We raise pigs on pasture. We feed them macadamia nuts. We feed them uh, papayas, bananas, and then also some regular feed, and then of course the pasture. And we actually use the water that is um, the spring from the farm. And, and what happens is we end up with this really great flavored pork. During the pandemic, we started curating all these boxes from all the different farmers all over the state. We do all these added value products. Corned beef was one of them, and they're a big hit, but they were so hard to make. You gotta remember, there's only so much brisket on every animal. Every pig only has a certain amount of pieces of bacon, and it also takes a human to create all that stuff. In Hawaii, we don't have giant facilities. We have two or three guys in a kitchen brining and cutting and smoking and curing and I mean, everything takes 20 days at the very minimum. I mean, to make bacon, it takes a full month. So, you know, you gotta find somebody that can do all those things. Corned beef brings just a bunch of childhood memories, uh, just about family, uh, feeding everybody. So we're uh, happy to uh, put the corned beef in the box. We're kind of special because we have a bunch of different climates that raise great vegetables, great livestock. The food has to reflect the land. We try to do it as much as we can. Try to focus on different farmers. What are they growing? What type of season it is? And I think a bunch of people on the island are trying to do it as much as they can. So our baker's ripe ulu and our recipe ready kalo, they come from small farmers from all over the island. We receive the ulu and we let it ripen. And that sort of uh, dry storage ripening allows it to have this full flavor come into the fruit and it becomes sweet and fruity. It wasn't really something that we intended to make. It just happened because we had so much fruit and it ripened. So we ended up getting creative and scooping the flesh out of the skin and putting it in this deep pan and steaming it until it was fully cooked. And this magical thing happened where the flesh became like a bread, like a sweet bread. And it's absolutely delicious. It really has that full flavor of ulu. And it happens to be my favorite product that we have and just one of my favorite stages to eat ulu in. Kalo is a little bit different because you have the oxalates inside, and so if you eat it undercooked, it'll actually make your throat itchy. Kalo comes in from our farmers. We peel it and we steam it so that it's fully cooked. Having a kalo that is fully cooked makes it really easy to add kalo into your dishes at home. Currently, we have nearly 100 farmers in our cooperative and a couple in Maui. It means coming together so farmers have somewhere to bring their fruit, to, to bring their crop, and they know that they can get a fair price and they know that their, their crop is going somewhere. Um, and not only that, but going somewhere that's also going back to the community. It seems like every time in Hawaii when we have a commodity, like I grew ginger and we did really well until the wholesalers decided they can get it cheaper from a foreign country. Ended up with guava that way, ended up with a lot of other crops, the tropical fruit trees. So I thought, okay, cacao would be a good one because everybody eats chocolate and the demand is way higher than what we could ever produce in our state. When I was in college, I, I liked plant pathology, which basically is a plant doctor. And I realized that I really enjoyed being outdoors. So I decided that uh, I didn't want to be indoors, staring down a microscope, you know, all day long. And how many years later now? I've been farming over 40 years. I love farming. I love watching things grow and I love to eat. It's good to grow what you like to eat. I love chocolate from when I was a little kid. Although now that I'm older, I'm more into the 90% or darker cacao, which is actually very healthy for you. Especially us old guys, gives us more brain power, which we need. <laughs>